These are 10 games that give you a small footprint, but pack a hell of a punch. What's up, everybody? My name is Nick. I'm Mike. We are the Brothers Murph, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Please we do. really appreciate it. It helps us a lot. And Mike, and today we're gonna talk about 10 games with small footprints, but really big, robust gameplay. Absolutely. So what do we mean by that? By, by a footprint, we mean that you know games will take up some amount of your table's space. And oftentimes lately, we have been finding that games Gosh. are taking up more and more table space Yes. to the point that it is kind of difficult at times to fit the game yeah. on your table to actually be able to play. Like normal everyday games nowadays feel like they're like 33% bigger than they used to be. <laughs> to the point where we play a lot of like just kind of standard Euro games and it's getting harder and harder to play them on this table, which by the way is a board gaming it's table. All this table And does. we're like, man, if we were playing a three or four player game of this, it couldn't fit on this table, which its entire purpose is playing board games. <laughs> and so we wanted to talk about games that we that have small footprints, but big gameplay, because it is a flex when that is the case, especially nowadays where all these publishers are going bigger, 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 start to make them smaller. Just and over on our Patreon, we're gonna have actually 11 more games on top of this list that have a small footprint, but big gameplay, but Mike, there's two kinds of games we're not gonna talk about this. We're not gonna talk about this, all right? Just because it would be like probably the whole list. <laughs> it would, I think most of these games fit this category. We're not gonna talk about abstract games. So we're talking about games like chess, Mythic Mischief, uh, Yinch, like all these games are typically small and you're doing tactile, yeah. tactical stuff. Those are all great. We're not gonna talk about them because again, that could be its own whole list. Yes. What else are we not gonna talk about? And then we're also gonna talk about Roll and Rights because Roll and Rights, again, kind of fit that thing where like, a game like Cartographers has tons and tons of gameplay in relatively small package because you're usually just writing on a pad of paper. Yeah. We're also not going to include Rolling Rights because, again, it really could be, they kind of all, for the most part, fit into that category. Yeah. So we're not going to talk about abstract games. We're not going to talk about Rolling Rights. But we are going to talk about 10 great games. Let's get into them. All right, so number 10, don't add us. Don't add don't us. Add us in the comments because it's Strike. You can add us if you say, great pick, Here's Mike the thing. Nick. Yeah, great pick. Here's the thing. Strike is great. It's the most thematic game on the planet. But it does have a very small footprint because this is a game where you are gladiators fighting in the arena Duh. with minis that are called just dice. They're just dice. Yeah, you but you, the game is the board. It has a little um, arena and you're chucking dice into there and you are trying to get pairs. When you get pairs, you get to grab those dice take them out, add them to like your squad yeah. of gladiators. Pairs or more, so if you get like four fours or something. Yeah, yeah sorry, not pairs, just sets, sets. Same exactly. And here's the thing, again, it's not the biggest gameplay in terms of like juicy decisions, but in terms of like gameplay experience, yes. small box, everyone's having a blast. Every time we have played Strike somewhere out in the world, it gets rowdy. Yes. It's so much fun because there's just a little bit of push your luck, a little bit of decision of like, do I throw one more die into the arena? Yeah. What happens if I come up all fives and I clear the entire arena, meaning the next player has to throw all their dice in and you are just trying to be the last person yeah. standing. So it's just got excitement. You've got the, the randomness of the dice roll. You can do the whole, I know how to roll these in an effective way. No, you don't. They are random number generators. <laughs> uh, it is so much fun. Yeah. And it's all right there in the box. So it's just got uniqueness and interest. Like it's real talk, affordable. bring this to the pub. Yes. Bring this to a restaurant. Oh you will God, have a yes. blast. But nonetheless, that's number 10, Strike. The rest of them will have a lot more strategy, I promise you. But number 10 is Strike because it's great. Number nine is a game uh, all about trying to stay alive in yeah. this world of Wonderland. This about, is Paint the Roses. I thought it was about the Bee Gees. Yeah, it is. It's Indeed. about staying alive. Uh, <laughs> It is uh, Paint the Roses. It is it's, Paint the Roses. Uh, set in the Alice in Wonderland world where you are uh, the Red Queen's gardeners and you are making the garden, uh, which is going to be contained of shrubberies, shrubberies in the shape of the, the four suits of cards. Yep. And on those shrubberies, there's going to be different colors of roses. There's four different colors of possible roses. And what it is, is like we've all been told disparate information. We've all been told like... Make the garden this way. Nick's been told, make the garden that way. And we can't talk too loud about it. So we need to try to build out the garden and give clues as to what our what the queen's whim is for us. Yes. So we have to basically say, the queen told me there's this. She wants pink roses next to pink roses. Uh, so when you go and play a tile, you can put a cube or more cubes basically, basically on saying, like, by the placement of this tile and everything surrounding it, I have three or two or one or whatever matches to the whim card that I hold. Now, based on that, people can look yeah. at like, well, okay, it's pink roses on this. There are two uh, tiles around it with pink roses, so maybe it's that, but there's also two tiles with like the spade color yeah. uh, shaped shrubbery 
So maybe it's that. I don't know. And you have yeah. to try to kind of deduce what's going on. Yeah, and you always have to make a, uh, a guess. Every single time you have to make a guess. And yeah. it's tough. And th it's nice because the board itself where you're putting out these tiles, because it's got really good production value, like a dual layer board. Yeah. But the board is like this big. Yeah. It's just, and then you have a little spot that holds the tiles. And then everyone just has their card like in their hand. That's it. It's a game that like despite it being super high production value because it's got really nice acrylic tiles, mm -hmm. dual layer boards, it's pretty darn small yeah. because it's just, you don't need it to be this huge right. thing. Because the garden is always a predestined size. Yes. And so you're just trying to complete it. So and all you're doing not, is putting you know, these tiles in there. So it doesn't need to be bigger than that. And so they no. didn't make it bigger than that. But there's a ton going on in this game because it's cooperative and because you can't talk. There's so much deduction going on. If like, okay, Mike put this one here. Oh, so it must be like clubs next to yellow. But no, if it's club next to yellow, why wouldn't he put it here? That would have made more matches for him. Right. And then on top of that, if it is club next to yellow, why wouldn't he have grabbed this tile instead? So there's so much interesting discussion and deduction going on for a game that ultimately has very little rules and a pretty small footprint. Right, and that's the whole thing is like the game takes place in the crosstalk of the yes. table. So that's they don't need a ton of extra yeah. stuff on the table because we're here to, dis to talk about... Uh, what's going on, but I think you made a good point. It's a small uh, board size and stuff, but high production value. Now, yes. we're talking the version we're talking about when we discuss the things is the deluxe version, yes. to be fair. To be fair. But uh, it also has miniatures for the queen and your little gardener ponds and the white rabbit that all live on the board as well. Yes. But they're super nice, high quality stuff. Yeah. So you're not like foregoing no. uh, the quality there to get something really awesome. But again, the point is, is to talk to each other. Yes and think about what's going on, and it allows, because there's not as much table space being taken up here, it allows more space for us to, you know, the theater of the mind yeah. to take place. So It's great. I mean, it really, really is good, and, and the footprint is just not that large. It's absolutely outstanding. That is our number nine. Let's get to number eight. Number eight is actually going to be a series of three games, because really all of these have a very small footprint. Yeah, this is going know. to be the da-da-da in 20 minutes. This is going to be Blitzkrieg, which is World War II in 20 minutes. Yeah, we've got uh, Caesar. C uh, Caesar sees Rome in 20 minutes. And then Dogfight Rule the Skies in 20 minutes? I think so. Yeah. I think so. But nonetheless, <laughs> these this three series of games yes. all really fall into this very small package. Yeah, they are all two-player slash solo games. Uh, where you are, yeah, just trying to win out against the other. In uh, Blitzkrieg, uh, you're the Allied Forces uh, versus the, the, the Axis. Axis Forces, and you are, it's kind of like a tug of war of yes. the different theaters of war. You're trying to play kind of strength and influence to kind of pull uh, the control of that area over to you. In Caesar, you are trying to control regions by placing out these tokens that are going to bisect and, and kind of give influence in both of the regions, and there's a little bit mm -hmm. of like, this region needs this kind of troop type, yep. uh, and you're trying to kind of have the most combined strength for each of those and get bonus tiles along the way. Yep. Then Dogfight simulates aerial battle, yeah. and it's it, you're kind of in a loop in the basis most version of the game. This, this version actually has a lot of ways to play, yeah. where you have two planes, and you're circling around, Sorry and you're trying doing. to end up right behind the other one so they can shoot at them and, yeah. and give them damage. So it's like... Uh, very much a guessing game of like, I'm gonna slow down, I think he's gonna speed up, so he's gonna speed right past me, then I'll be behind him. Very much the yeah. like, when are you gonna play this card yeah. game? Uh, Tons of mind games, and yeah. all three games, but particularly in Dogfight. But each one, again, everything takes place on the board. The boards are all like this big, they yep. all have the exact same box size. And then you have a little screen because you have, again, different strength of chips that you're putting out Correct. in all three uh, games. And so you have a little screen, you have that behind that, but that's it, that's the entire game, but everything else is taking place on that board, so yeah. you don't need anything else. And they just, again, they're all 20 minutes long. They're all uh, really, really fun, really tactical, tons and tons of mind games, and they're all really, really good. I'm, I'm, how would you rank the three of them if you had to pick your favorite? I think I'd probably like, Dogfight and Caesar are pretty darn close, yeah. and then Blitzkrieg is my least favorite. Yeah. yeah, that's how I would do it. I, on any given day, I'd go Dogfight or Caesar. I think. Dogfight is crazy. Dogfight mind is games. really interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's definitely the most different of the yes. three, um, but they're all really great, and they all provide you fun tactical experiences. They can all be played solo, which is really cool. Yes. Um, and yeah, the board is always just this little guy in the middle, and that's where you know all of your mm -hmm. the, the intrigue happens yeah. and stuff. So very it's just, interesting. They all do really well. Yeah, this at series that is shape and size of box really really great and all of them have the same kind of footprint it's really awesome mm. so that is the 20 minute series uh and that is number uh, uh eight let's go ahead and get number seven 
Number seven is uh, a game that we found early on in, in early our on. hobby and stuff and at a game night that we went to. Someone talked to us. This is World's Fair 1893. And I've always been impressed with the size of this one for yes. the gameplay. Yes, it provides a really fun... Uh, Gateway Plus level yeah. experience where it gives you a lot of stuff to do, but it's just not that heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's really cool is like a the uniqueness of the board. It's the Ferris wheel that was a kind of centerpiece of the World's yeah. Fair in 1893. So it's this big like, oct no, it's it's a hexagon, isn't it? Pentag or is it a pentagon? Yeah, I guess it's a hexagon because there's five, yeah. and then the bottom would be the, the Ferris wheel part. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, it's a hexagon shaped board. And, uh, and this has the kind of different arenas or the different areas that the World's Fair focused on. And you are ultimately trying to have influence, uh, you know, your folks inf influence different areas so that you can hopefully, if you have those colored cards in your hand, yeah. and you're drafting cards by playing out into the different areas and stuff, you're hoping to have those cards, win the area, be able to play a bunch of your blue cards to turn them into blue tokens, which is a set collection for yeah. scoring. Um, what's really cool is like, A, it's a uniquely shaped board, yeah. and it's this hexagon shaped board, this cool Ferris wheel, but it's just, you know, about this big. You do put cards around the outside of that that you're drafting and collecting. They're small cards. But they're those kind of mini cards. Um, yeah, so it does a lot of fun stuff and gives you an area control game that's not based in war in any way, which yeah. is kind of cool and exciting. It's kind of putting your followers around, yeah. Yeah, but you're just putting your followers around and stuff, so uh, just the uniqueness of the board and then the size of it, when you get down to it, you're like, you know what, this is actually kind of all really nice and yeah, really contained. contained, and it's all you know in its area, and you're just collecting some like little chips and stuff, so it never gets that big on you. No, it's just, and it's cool. Again, like, great production, uh, it's again, unique board. Yep. All of the cards are actual exhibitions that were at the World's yeah. Fair in 1893. So you can, and they have like a little bit of, like a little blurb on them, tells you kind of like what they were, like the cool Viking ship or this or that. So like you can read about all this different kind of Super stuff, but cool. it's quick gameplay, scales really well amongst all the player counts. Yep. It doesn't get much bigger with the player counts um, at all. The board doesn't change size or anything like that. No. It's just really, really good. And we've always been impressed by like, it comes in a, a very reasonably small size box, plays great, a ton of stuff you can do in the game, a lot of great, ways you can manipulate the board and where your followers are, try to get those area majorities so that you can score those cards and turn them into sets. It's really, really outstanding. Um, and there's just a lot going on. And again, in as, as the entire list is, a pretty small package. Yeah. It's just it's just a very reasonable size game. They could have made that that pentagon board a whole big board and all the cards are, are in their own area, and they didn't. They just made it like this, send around the thing, and said, the cards just go around. That's all you needed to do. Nice and easy. And easy peasy. It's just outstanding. It really is. Absolutely. So that is World's Fair 1893 and number seven. Uh, love the theme so much on this. We've talked so much about this game over the years. Yeah. Uh, and it's just never less charming. Yeah. Uh, that's number seven. Let's get to number six. Number six, we have talked about multiple times, is a flex with how yeah. small it is. And this is Legacy of You. For how small? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, just, yeah, Legacy of You is a solo-only game by Garfield Games. Garfield Games, actually, a, lo a lot of games in this series, the kind of ancient anthology games, are yeah. not very big. They're, they're, um, they're smaller than you'd think. Yes. Uh, the newest one, Ezra Nehemiah, which is not small, but, like, honestly, again, yeah, it's just, like... Could have been way this bigger. This is, like, on the smallest possible side you could have made that, yeah. and it's, I appreciate it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> the Legacy of You is a really, really great solo game where you are you, uh, the person you, and you are basically trying to build out canals before the flood happens. So hopefully yeah. as the flood Along goes, the it goes river. down these canals down the Yellow River so that it doesn't flood and destroy everything, basically. Yeah, basically it's a period of just tons of flooding, a lot of strife and yeah. stuff. And so you're a lot of barbarians. So you're trying to also like get them to go away either by finding them or bribing them and then also dealing with this flood. But it's on this board. And again, there's some cards above the board and below the board, but it's like, it's all just contained in this board. But the thing that you really, really love is like all of the resources stuff are just sitting in the box. Yeah, so the box is just well organized where they have little, you know, divots for all the pieces to go. Uh, and what I do when I play, and I, you know, what you do as well, is like the board is just this nice contained size yeah. board, and I just put the box Boom. right next to it, so I have all my pieces, and I can just put them in all and the take cards. them out of the box. All the cards are just right here. You know, you have a couple decks for the barbarians and the villagers and stuff, and then you have a discard pile beneath the board, and like that's it. So the fact that I can use that box, I don't have to take all the pieces out and put them into bit trays or whatever. It's like, no, I can mm -hmm. just crack open the box, boom, put this thing out, set up a couple decks of cards, check my story where I'm at, and play. Yeah. Is amazing. It's, you know, especially yeah. for like a little campaign game, it yeah. makes it easier to get those extra plays in and actually get through the story. Yeah. <laughs> especially for like a solo game. If I'm playing a solo game, I need it to be here. 
Yeah. Just like right in 100%. front of me. I don't want to have to like be looking all over. I want it to be right here so I can just get into this game and just really dive into that puzzle. Legacy U is the perfect size. I mean, the absolute perfect size. And again, could it's got great art. Could have been way bigger. No, they just made it the size they made it. And it's absolute, an absolute flex. Yeah, it's just, it's the right size for the right game at the right time. There are smaller solo games and be like a little card-based game, but this one gives you a board. It gives you these things, gives you resources and stuff to munch on, but keeps it contained. Yeah, for a campaign game, like, let's oh, go. It's so yeah. awesome. We really enjoy uh, Legacy of You. We've, uh, yeah, it's super, super duper fun and a resettable campaign at that. So That's you true. can play through multiple times. That's number six, Legacy of You. Let's hop into number five. Number five we've been talking about a lot lately, and we've been specifically mentioning how much of a flex this game is, and this is The White Castle. Flex is so hard, The bro. flex is so hard The, the flex White is Castle. hard now. We're in the top half, the flex is getting hard now. <laughs> so The White Castle is kind of a pseudo-sequel to The Red Cathedral by Devere, although it's not similar in terms of the way it looks, the way it plays, There's or There's dice theme. drafting. That's about it. That's about it. And it's kind of a similar size. <laughs> but yeah. nonetheless, uh, The White Castle is a game where you are... Uh, putting out warriors to train in the yard, putting courtiers in Hemeji Castle, and then putting gardeners, gardeners out in the out. garden. It's a dice drafting game, but again, the game is just, it's like this big as the board, and pretty much everything happens on the board. You have your own little player board that you do put some cards kind of next to, but they, they, there's literally a cutout in the board for your yeah. cards to go so there. So it's still contained within the board. So it's still way. contained within <laughs> yeah. the board. And that board is not overly large. And though. everything else is just in a main board about this big. There's some really nice production quality aspects yeah. to it where you're drafting dice from these bridges and there are little cardboard 3D print, not 3D printed, little cardboard 3D bridges, yep. which you can also just not use if you don't want to. Yep. And then everything else is just like beautiful art, nice dice, these cool little bridges, and then just some really great gameplay. Yeah, this game comes down to uh, Combo. the combos, because you, you only have nine turns in the game, that's it. But that's you it. are going to take more than nine turns worth of turns in the game. Yes. <laughs> Ideally, because a lot of things you do will go into, if you do this action, you pay this thing over here, you can do this other type of action. Now I'm placing a gardener and, and using my food, and that's gonna give me this other kind of action. I'm placing a warrior, whatever it might be. Uh, and so it's just got a great flow of like gaining resources and then once you get those built up, just hit that monster turn. Yeah. And so the gameplay feels massive. Yes. Because you're doing, in a not super long amount of time, uh, you know, uh, you are getting so much fun, juicy decisions and gameplay experience and the synergies and combos. So you will undoubtedly have a turn where you feel like a genius. You're like, oh my yeah. gosh, I chained this thing into that thing and that thing. I planned it out and played it beautifully. And I think that's such a nice thing. Even if you don't win the game, you're like, you know what? I did some cool I'm stuff. I'm satisfied. I got to do what yeah. I wanted to do. You'll always have one turn that's like, dope. Just bonkers. <laughs> yeah. You'll have a banana pants turn every yeah. time. You're just like, that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so good. And we keep talking about like, man, in, in, a, in a year full of games that are gargantuan, just yes. humongous. Games are bigger than ever. <laughs> so, so big. This one just isn't. It's just like, this is how big it is. And we're just like, man, that is a flex. It really, really is. Like, this is so good. And we every time we talk about this game, we always bring up the size of it because we're like, because that matters, you can yep. play this game. Like, I played it the other day with Paula and Johnny Claire, and we played it like on like a coffee table. There you go. Because we could. There because it was that small. And we're just like, this is so great. So White Castle, one, is, is front runner for game of the year, I think, for both of us. Or it's very hard up there. And the size is awesome. Awesome. It's so, so good. The White Castle okay. rocks. It's so good. Uh, that is number five. Let's hop into number four. Number four is a biggie. Yeah. It's a big two-player game, tactical, crunchy experience. The most, you know, one of the most popular two-player yeah, games ever. Yeah, it is. Uh, Seven Wonders Duel. Yeah. Seven Wonders Duel, uh, you know, you build a couple card pyramids in the center of the table. And you have your own little tableau. You have your own little tableau that you're building, but they are with those kind of miniature sized yep. cards, those little half of the standard size of cards. You have a little wonder card, some, you know. Yeah, a couple of wonder cards that are, uh, I guess, tarot, tarot sized size cards. They're on the side. Know? Yeah. And that's really it. It's just, again, cards can, can get you far without yeah. taking up a ton of space. But this one just gives you such a great engine building yeah. uh, experience. The kind of heads up nature of the two player Seven Wonders game. So, Seven Wonders Duel here uh, and the Card pyramid, the way it's set up, where I want to make sure that I control the access to cards, that I make sure that you have to play something that gives me first crack of that next card in the next row, because mm -hmm. you're going to re release it, which means those things flip over, uh, and how you try to control that so that yeah. you have to take stuff that I don't care yeah. about, I get all the stuff I care about, 
building up in that first era, your productions of, you know, brick and stuff and all that so you can make your life cheaper in the future, something I do not excel at usually in that game, <laughs> um, is so fun and so awesome. Yeah. And it just does it, again, two-player, so it doesn't, yeah. it's not going to take up as much space ever in a two-player game, but it just does it so well. Yeah, I think this, this is definitely one of the poster childs for this kind of a concept of, like, yep. small footprint but a ton of gameplay people talk about how it's not the heaviest game ever but it's like much heavier than like seven wonders yeah and it's just like it's Feels very like high it. up on the top 100 of bgg i think it's in the top 20 or close to the top 20 so cool. i mean it is so well loved it's so much strategy so much tactical good juicy decisions Ugh. in a small again it's in that kind of classic square box that a lot of people love yep. it's just small cards they could have made them bigger they didn't they made them this big and i was like that's great and then it's just they just on the table anyway. It's just sitting there, and so it's just like it's so good. I really think this is like, if you ask questions like, what's a game with a with a small footprint but tons of gameplay? This would probably be one of the top ranked ones that people talk about yeah. because of that. And so it had to be on the list. It really, absolutely deserves its spot to be on the list. I mean, it does so much and keeps it nice and contained, especially the two player game where you're going to be right here looking. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be bigger no. than that. So again, I like it. It's like they didn't need to make it bigger, so they didn't. Yeah. Which is sweet. Yeah, totally. So that is Seven Wonders Duel number four. It's a great game. We're going to get number three. Number three, you brought up, and I was just like, God, you that's a really good point. Listen, again, don't at us. I know there's a ton of content. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's too many bones. Too many yeah. bones. Too many bones is not yeah. big, though. That's the thing. It's not. Especially for a chip theory game where their games tend to be <laughs> humongous. That's kind of their thing. They're very over the top with everything, but that's what they do. They make very, very deluxe games. And Too Many Bones, the quality of the component stuff is very, very big. Oh, yeah. But in Too Many Bones, you are going through these different encounters and you are always going to be playing out fights onto the kind of fight board. Yes. But the board is this big. It's not a board. It's a neoprene mat. And it's this big. And then everyone has their own character, which has all these dice spots on it. But the die, your character board is the exact same size. It's this little square. You so know, like, like it's not yeah. And it's like it's this big. And you, I was like, God, that's such a good point because. That's it, and especially because Too Many Bones, most people, I would say most people, probably play Too Many Bones solo, but even if you were playing a four-player game, it's still we, smaller. We'd have no problem playing than on the Than the vast majority of games nowadays. Yes. And now again, especially while the, the original Too Many Bones, it came in a box about this big, like it literally can't <laughs> fit into a Calax, it's humongous. Yeah. But nowadays, they're actually coming in much smaller boxes, because they're like, oh yeah, we can fit all this into a box this size. It's yeah. really, really small. And I was like, God, that's such a good point. And Too Many Bones for a lot of people is like literally like a lifestyle game. Oh yeah. So the they amount of content, in. the amount of like decisions you can make, the amount of gameplay there is seemingly infinite because people play this game thousands and thousands and thousands of times. <laughs> yes. And it's really small. And I was like, God, that is such a good point, Mikey. Yeah, I think the main thing is like where you gain a lot of ground is that the central board is just basically a spot for four by four grid of chips to go yep. into. Boom, your people as you're fighting. And then a and row for a, dice. And a row for dice. Yeah. Most of the time, we have a game that has a large central board and then large player boards. So here, the central board and the, lar and the large player boards are the same size. Yeah. But we save so much space on the central board that it's like, okay, well that's not I so I can have a big player <laughs> board. I can have a big player board because yeah. that's where the game is. You want to level up your character and stuff. So it allows you to really get into and allow that to shine because the central board just needs to hold some pieces for fighting purposes, but it's not. Yeah. It's it's kind of the Okama there in terms of like where you are and where you're standing is very abstracted. So uh, I just love that. I was like, you know what? For the style of game, big splashy, you know, stuff. It's like you can have some dice in a in a, in the a little, little tray. The little tray that they give you off to the side. The chips are in a tray. <laughs> your chips are in a tray. You have your your board and your dice that you've gotten and unlocked and all that stuff. The central board and that's it. Yeah, it's really small, Pretty especially great. for the size game. It is. It's really really small. When Mike brought it, I was like, God, that's a good ass point. Like, it is a, not like, a very big game at all, <laughs> especially compared to a lot of our other games. And yes. so, too many bones. Honestly, pretty darn small. Way to be. Let's get number two. How, how much bigger did you think this game was when you didn't see it in real life? Okay, so I saw a picture of this, and I thought it was going to be like the Castles of Burgundy yeah. box. Uh, we're talking about big. Village Rails. So big. if you haven't seen Village Rails in person, I'll just go I'll find it. I'll grab it's it. Right here. Picture a Castle of Burgundy sized box. <gasps> Boom! <laughs> this is the <laughs> Village Rails. When I saw this at Gen Con, I was like, oh, I this is like a like, prop. Yeah, I was like, oh, so this is like a... A stand, uh, like a, a, You know, like a little... Placeholder. Place placeholder. They're like, no, that's the game. I was like... What? Are you kidding me? I want this right now. Oh. 
I love how dinky it is. Look at that. Look at that. The reason this is on this list yes. is this gives you a crunchy spatial, spatial yeah. puzzle that's very fast. Yes. You take 12 turns. Yeah. Uh, and you are, and it's a tight resource game. <coughs> yeah. You are trying to maximize these train routes that you are building by playing cards that will have basically two tracks that are either going across like this or turning in different ways. Mm -hmm. And you're playing them out and <coughs> they kind of go to the edge of your board, which is just, you know, these two little strips of cardboard. And you're going to build out 12 cards into the spaces, the void that those strips create. So your your game will not be bigger than this yeah. because that is it the is, again, size small cards. of the yeah. cards. You have to build in a three by four grid. It's all kind of contained. Uh, but you get to create these different routes that depending on the types of iconography on the routes, you want to have a bunch of different landscapes or a bunch of the same landscapes or uh, collecting these little train stop uh uh, icons on your board and then you can do these things where you place these kind of destination um, I don't know objectives or whatever yeah, I can't remember onto what them which then will is, give you yeah. additional scoring you yeah. can do when that route completes basically when it reaches the edge of the predestined yeah. grid um, there's so much to think about and do and how do I maximize this to get as many points as possible there are also kind of villagers who have their own requests, and if you can meet those requests, then you can get money, which is good, because that's how you get those extra scoring cards onto your yeah. routes. Um, oh, it does so much stuff. It's so fun. The puzzliness of it. Yeah. The um, how do I stretch my dollar to, you know, you're drafting out cards, and the bottom one's free, but if I want the third one in, yep. i got to put money on the first yep. and second one. It's like, oh. Is it worth spending that money to get the card that I want before you take it yeah. or whatever? It does so many things, and it is in this size box. <laughs> it is so small. Man, it's 45 minutes of fun, y'all. Village yeah. Rails, a game of locomotives and local motives. Great so idea. good. It's so good. Yeah, it was. It, that was the, was the thing. We away. thought it was going to be a much bigger game. Much and bigger. Nope, it was that size. We were blown away. One of the biggest flex, but not the biggest flex. There is one That's here. number one. A lot of you probably know what's coming. Yeah. I don't even care. We're going to talk about it anyway. It's Clans of Caledonia. We already okay. knew it. The it's biggest flex is Clans of Caledonia, yeah. obviously. We've talked about how big the flex is for years. The biggest flex of all time. <laughs> <laughs> the reason is, is that this is very much a midweight economic Euro game. Yes. You are just trying to stretch your dollar as far as you can, get as much stuff out onto the board. Uh, with that, you were trying Look to create it. groups and stuff, and it's in that size Look box. It. Not only is that that large, it's a skinny, skinny mini. mini. You know skinny what I mean? Skinny mini. Boom! It doesn't take up a ton of space. The boards themselves are four little boards that you kind of, you know, put around in a random orientation. Yeah. Uh, and then you have player boards. This but big. the player boards are this big. Yeah. That's all. And on that, you put all your little pieces, and then as you take your pieces off, it gives you production. So yeah. if I have sheep out there, for every sheep I have, I'll produce a wool. How do I remember that? Well, when you take a sheep off, it shows a little wool symbol. Sure. So it's a nice, clean, yes. easy reminder of like what you gain uh, by what you place out. Yeah. Um, you know, resource-wise, there's wonderful wooden pieces yes. for all the types of things, but you know, they're not too big. No. Um, there's a little sideboard that has the contracts and stuff you can draft, but again, very small and yeah. contained. The central board is not very large because they just have to hold these little wooden pieces. That's it. That's it. Um, it does so much. Yeah. There is now an expansion coming, but the extra flex was that they just dropped this game and said, like, that's all. Yeah, years ago. No expansions. Yeah. That's the game. Ooh, that's awesome. Yeah, they've been flexing for years. I mean, it's flexing. just like the main board, again, could have been the hexes <sighs> are the, are, on the space so are like this big. They could have been big hexes. They're not. They're just small because there's not much that goes in there. It's going to be like one or two pieces the maximum. Piece wood. That's it. Again, there's a little market board that has stuff, but that's not very big. You have the contract boards that are big, and then your little player boards are tiny. That's yeah. it. It's so easy to fit this game on any table. The box is small, so it's easy to fit on a shelf. It's got great, like Clemens Franz art. The production value of like the cardboard is really good. The little wooden pieces are great. There's like little sheep and like little breads they and are stuff. Adorable. And like they're really good looking. Like yep. it, everything about this game is great in such a Small package that just didn't, this so easily could have been like a normal size board and everything, especially nowadays. I feel like it would be this huge, the main board would be like a ticket rise size board. <laughs> the market board would be like this. And then your player boards would be like this just because that's how games are nowadays. Yeah. And this one, 
isn't. It's just like this. And I'm like, I freaking love how small it is. It's amazing. Yeah. It's such a flex. It's so awesome. Uh, the game is so good. And it's one of my favorite games. It's Top so five. good. It's just a pure, like, tight resource yeah. game where it's just like, man, money is tight. You are struggling for cash. Everything costs money. How do I get as many resources as I can? Within each round, there are specific objectives to get points. There's like, okay, I'm trying to do these contracts. Well, but I also want to make sure I have like a bunch of like the kind of upgraded goods at the end of the round because I can get some points out of that. Uh, wonderful decisions to make. Just really with, um, so good. this is the perfect game of like, they have exactly enough for what they need yeah. to make this game happen and no more. And but without sacrificing anything. I don't feel like they cut a single corner. I don't feel yeah. like, oh man, I w wish. They could have just done like different color cubes for the different types of things. Yeah. But no, the, the wooden yeah. bits are really nice and stuff and really clearly what they are. Um, it just does it so well. Yeah. It threaded that needle perfectly. Clans of Caledonia, for the weight of game it gives you, the size of the experience um, in so much of a smaller package. So that is 10 games. Smaller footprint than you'd expect. Bigger gameplay than you'd expect. Now, of course, we didn't talk about them all. As we said in the intro, we're talking about 11 more over on Patreon. I mean, that's not all the games out there no. that fit this bill. Uh, like we said, we didn't mention abstract <laughs> games at all. Yes. Roll and rights. Yeah. There are so many that fit this category. So hit us in the comments. What do you think is a game that you're like, you know what? This, for me, fits this bill perfectly. Fits this topic. We want to know. We always want to share with people as many games as possible so yeah. that anyone who's looking for this kind of topic gets a huge great list I think list it's an important comments. list to have because it's like a lot of people don't have huge tables. Yes. So they're like, what's a good we game? We are very privileged and lucky to have yes. a gaming table. Not everyone has that. No, exactly. Maybe so all you have like, is a coffee table. Yeah. Well, we got to be able to play games Yeah, on exactly. It. So, yeah. So let us know down in the comments what are some of your favorite small footprint, Please. big gameplay games. Uh, and again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Nick. I'm Mike. We're the Buzz Murph. And we'll see you later, everybody. Hey, publishers. Think about it. Think about it. Just bring them down a little bit. Just bring them on down a little bit. We will be fine. We'll still buy them.